Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, we are finally putting together the big engine. Motor, rather. The big rocket motor. So, what I got here is the grain mold. We're going to obviously first have to cast a grain of propellant. So I'm going to make some of the uh, some of the standard K&SB propellant. So, uh, Luke Foley from Foley Defense, who sent this whole, whole bit of kit up, he uh, included this little grain mold example and you literally just put that over and you cast your propellant right in there slider right out now I do need to lube my spindle so for that I'm gonna use a little silicone grease Ooh. very lubricious stuff here and this will ensure that the propellant doesn't stick to the central spindle and it'll let the core the core mold slide out nice and easily there we go that should be good and we're set up to cast a grain that quick all right we should be in business get the uh, the skillet out and cook up some pancakes uh, I mean propellant now on a quick side note I got a care package recently I did uh, put a post on it on the channel Luke sent up obviously you know, machinists, engineers, they watched the last video, they they heard me talking about the graphite nozzles, and boom, look at that. They <laughs> they sent up some spare graphite rods, so when, when the time comes, if these erode, I can replace it. But some absolutely gorgeous graphite nozzles here. Beautiful. So we have the convergence section there, and then the divergent here. And they sent up three different sizes, plus a blank plus some extra rod so we are in good shape for doing a lot of testing now I'm probably going to start off with a nine millimeter because that that looks like a nice safe size to start out with for a single grain motor uh, I don't want to start out with the 6.3 that I just want to get a feel for things you know I want to make sure we're not going to burst the casing and uh, potentially send some shrapnel my way all right, I'm gonna mix up some propellant real quick. Standard 65-35 ratio, potassium-based oxygen to sorbitol. Already ran this stuff through the Blendini, so it's very, very finely powdered. I think 100 grams should be enough to totally fill the casing. Now, the really cool thing about making your own propellant is you can totally modify the formulation within reason. So the standard mix here is 65. Uh, potassium based oxygen 35 sorbitol but to that you can add an additional small percentage you know one or two percent red iron oxide and get a slightly faster burning propellant gives you a little little higher thrust but also a shorter burn duration so you're, you're trading now you can also add stuff for cool effects like a little bit of titanium sponge or titanium powder that'll give you sparks uh, that'll shoot out of the nozzle of your engine as the titanium rapidly oxidizes and essentially burns. So what we're going for here is just a nice homogeneous solution. It does look like my temperature is a little high. It's, it's caramelizing a tiny bit, which it should not be doing. So I just dropped the temperature a bit. Yeah, definitely overcooked it a little bit. That's not optimal. It should be just a nice toothpaste white, a little bit off-white, but this is a slightly more caramel color, but it should still be a very viable propellant. So what I'm going to have to do is cast this grain and get it into storage for tomorrow. So I'll cast the grain, let it harden up before I remove it from the uh, casing here, or uh, the mold rather, and then I'll put it in a like a Ziploc with some desiccant bags because this mixture will absorb water out of the air. It's, it's hygroscopic. All right, we're just at forming temperature here. So I'm gonna start loading some grain in and I'm gonna press it down with a little rod that I coated, put some silicone oil on it. Gives you a whole new level of respect for the dudes at NASA who <laughs> by some miracle cast those massive booster grains for the uh, shuttle. The SRBs got it filled up to the top here, and I'm just gonna squeeze her down. 
Make sure it's as loaded as possible. And that should be a fully ready to go motor grain for the biggest rocket motor I have personally <laughs> ever fired. All right, the moment of truth. Let's see if the, uh, the mold separates nicely. Oh, well that was easy. And now the core. Oh, beautiful. Easy peasy. All right guys, so I'm here in my office. See the editing station slash uh, porn refinery. <laughs> we now have the 50 kilogram load cell set up on the uh, stand here. I've also reinforced it with some two by fours and Craig screw joinery and wood glue and all that good stuff. And right now I have the equivalent of 10,609 grams on there, so about uh, 23 pounds. And she's reading pretty dead on. All right, guys, the time has finally come to light this candle. It has been ridiculously cold the past week, so much so that my wife's laptop wouldn't even fire up after being outside for like a minute. So, this is the motor grain. Nice and tight fit. Wow. Holy shit. All right, the grain is in the casing. Now I'm gonna add a small amount of black powder just to ensure we get good ignition because Unlike our other motors, the E-Match is just kind of going to be free floating in there. So, to ensure we get a good ignition of the whole grain, add a little bit of black powder. And we'll now put the nozzle on. I'm using the 9mm nozzle. I think that's kind of a good middle ground to go with just for our first test. We do have one smaller diameter nozzle, but I don't want to push our luck on our very first test here. Now I put some anti-seize on the aluminum threads, one that'll help prevent uh, hot exhaust gases from sneaking by, and two that'll prevent the aluminum from galling and also from catching foreign materials. Holy shit, we're loaded. That is by far, I think, the most power I've ever held in my hand, except for one other uh, similarly round object or cylindrical object. <laughs> <laughs> so, time to bring the sucker outside, hook it up to the laptop, stick an E-match in there. Oh, it's real now. It's a bit terrifying. Alright, all systems are go. Got the uh, new GoPro set up. And we are going to get two angles of this sucker. Let's hope she works. And please don't blow up my wife's laptop. I'm going to run. Look at that data. Gorgeous. All right, guys, so that test could not have gone more beautifully. And taking a look at the rocket here, I have not yet taken this apart. We have some crusting on the nozzle, which is to be expected. That's very normal. Doesn't look like any erosion, which is great. I mean, it's a graphite nozzle, so I wasn't expecting to see any erosion. And she's coming apart very easy thanks to the anti-seize and I also coated the inside in some uh, silicone grease just to prevent any anything from sticking to the metal Let's see what she looks like in here alright so it looks like the liner the paper liner is still partially intact beautiful so <laughs> the engine survived totally completely unscathed looks basically brand new with a little washout it'll you won't even be able to know this thing was fired got a bit of crustiness in there which that's normal with this type of propellant propellant yeah so that, 
That might just be a little slight excess of uh, potassium based oxygen there. No biggie. But everything is in perfect shape. Uh, thank you so much to Foley Defense for donating these uh, motor casings. They're gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And looking at our data now, the important stuff. So we generated a beautiful thrust curve. You can see total duration of the burn. I started the zero uh, right about there. And it looks like we have a total burn of just a hair under 1.3 seconds in which we generated a max thrust of 5,417 grams. Just a hair under 12 pounds. I was expecting a bit more out of a, a grain this size because we had about 75 grams of propellant, so quite a bit. But I did go very conservative on the nozzle. We do have, this is a 9 millimeter nozzle. I think on the next test I'm going to do a 6.3 millimeter. That way we, uh, we should build a little bit higher chamber pressure and thus generate more thrust. But overall, I mean, look at that curve. It is gorgeous. Gorgeous curves are not just valid in a strip club. It works here too. This is beautiful. Now also, if you're more familiar with Excel, I'm sure you could probably uh, find the area under the curve. Now for me, it's been quite a long time since I took my classes in calcar baiting, and uh, I had no clue how to do it in Excel. So I'm actually, I'm gonna try to post the data uh, down below or maybe include a link to it or something. So if one of you guys who's maybe more sophisticated in Excel could figure out how to get the total area under this curve, that's the ISP of the motor. So that would be definitely something helpful to have because then you know what class your motor is actually in. Pretty cool stuff. But uh, I wasn't able to figure out how to do it in my Excel. I was fiddling with it for about an hour and just couldn't get anything to, uh, to give me data. But overall guys, that was an awesome, awesome test. I am so happy with the way that turned out. And I need to now go make some more E-matches because I'm down to my last one and we have a lot more testing to do. So I will see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy the channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon so I can keep these videos rolling. Uh, you know, everything here was funded through patrons and I cannot tell you guys how much I appreciate everything you do and you know we're just we're, we're sitting here learning we're learning rocket science on a budget it is freaking awesome <laughs> so thank you so much to my patrons thank you to rob for donating the gopro hero 5 i hope that got an excellent shot and thank you so much to luke at foley defense for donating the motor the motor casing beautiful beautiful machine work and i will see you guys next time have a great one